little avatar hologram broadcast that they are controlling, living on mind control. They're living as a broadcast, like the movie Avatar, how they live as the blue people. Right, they're in that old capsule, that, so they're on mind control. Right, these guys are the same. They're sitting at their house back in the Atlanta area, uh, a thousand miles away from me, with a little thing on their head. It looks like a little EEG device, even less invasive than that. And uh, and you know, I've seen I've seen uh, some of these guys that have this stuff. They're like they don't have jobs and they don't do anything and they there's 10 people live in the house and and uh so it's not something that you have to have a, a million dollars to get or a thousand dollars or whatever i think they can probably get them from whoever they get them from and, and it works like an amplifier where they're receiving um and it helps with the broadcast send and receive or whatever it's like an amplifier for them so that's what these gang stalkers oh, have and they um they're on mind control connected to their living as a broadcast okay like a little hologram broadcast avatar that's somewhere else rather than where their physical body is and they like to try to attack humans with it so these guys, they're they're impatient and needing my attention, and uh, mm-hmm. you know, just for the record, they whine too. But like, like if I'm like think of how stupid they are, they're like, man, man, or if I get mad and try to do something like create a video or make posts about them torturing me, then they complain. They're like, man, man, you know, I'm getting kicked off the channel, right? And they whine like little boys, and they act like six year olds. And it's probably their mama's fault. I don't know. But they really act like six-year-olds. It's like the last people in the world that should have technology like this to be able to use it in such malicious ways. Even right now, I can feel broadcast like penetrating into my neck and it starts feeling like a little bit of an electric jolt and then then it's penetrated in and it starts to hurt and just it becomes agonizing, really. Um, but... Uh, again, I'll, I'll say this on every video from now on, okay? Robert Dwayne Lackey of Stockbridge, Georgia. You can check out the video right here um, where he left me a voicemail uh, at one point um, saying safety for sale, safety for sale, right? And then, oh, I've been uh, watching over you for 15 years. All this dumb stuff he's saying. I can feel broadcast like penetrating into my neck and it starts feeling like a little bit of an electric jolt and then then it's penetrated in and it starts to hurt and just it becomes agonizing really um but uh, again I'll, I'll say this on every video from now on okay robert Dwayne lackey of stockbridge georgia you can check out the video right here um where he left me a voicemail uh, at one point um saying safety for sale safety for sale of stockbridge georgia you can check out the video right here um where he left me a voicemail uh, at one point um saying safety for sale safety for sale right and then oh i've been uh watching over you for 15 years all this dumb stuff he's saying um these four guys that are on my Yeah, man. All right. So today is the 22nd of June, 2020. Um, I'll always remember this day for some particular reasons that I'll probably discuss at a later time. Uh, so earlier in my video, I was talking about something that happened and um, it was something that happened over the weekend um, on Saturday night, uh, really was going on throughout the weekend. So, um, you know, I'm not going to get very detailed to protect certain people, um, even though they may not be innocent, but I feel like some people in this situation are very lost and confused. Um, so, but as always, as I've always done, um, the telepathic saga of Kevin Christian's remote neural monitoring is going to have to be public. It's going to have to be out there. Just like the rest of the story, um, the remainder of the story is going to be the same. So um, there's a particular gang stalker 
and uh, this guy has been involved with my gang stalking situation all the way that I know of since uh, 2015 when uh, or maybe 2014 some of the er very early isolated incidents of artificial telepathy and EMF broadcasts and some of those things happening that were very isolated um, now and then type of things so it didn't become completely full time until 2015. Um, but this particular guy has always been involved and um, a lot of people proclaim him as their leader in this gang stalking um, organization or whatever you want to call it. Um, so what happened was somebody contacted me, a female, and this isn't the first time. This has happened numerous times that people have contacted me and said, uh, you know, some of these people that um, that you've got problems with, with gang stalking, I have the same problems with the same people. So um, this particular girl contacted me and, and said that she had some problems with some of these particular gang stalkers and um, wanted to talk to me about it. And so we started to discuss things a little bit and then uh, we actually were hanging out. And so, um, but also uh, this girl was, and, and she told me, she kind of told me that she was trying to do this. Um, she was reaching out to this particular gang stalker. Okay. Because um, and, and I get it. I mean, I don't get it, but I get it. Um, you know, I've been in that situation before and where I was trying to reach out to people that, uh, that I knew were involved with gang stalking me. And I thought that maybe that could help me, um, find a solution to my problems. Uh, and it never did, it never did, but, um, but I can understand why somebody would want to, um, you know, I don't know if that's the only reason that she wanted to, but, um, you know, she's, she's looking for a solution to the problem that she has. All right. And so, but things got kind of nasty. Um, what happened was, um, this gang stalker didn't like me helping this person understand things. Uh, for one, that's, that's what I can figure. That's what is openly, um, uh, that's the only open issue, uh, that I can see. So, uh, you know, what they'll do is try to take any action that they can to make things happen the way that they want things to happen. And so, um, whatever, whatever was happening, I was hanging out and, um, you know, I guess I fell asleep, and the next thing I know, I'm getting woke up by this girl asking me to leave. And she had this gang stalker on her speakerphone. I, I know this was. I noticed who this person is. And, um, you know, I, <sighs> something was wrong, all right, and I don't know what. And I, I don't know if I was drugged or uh, or some kind of bizarre broadcast, but I, things were cloudy and this was a very bizarre situation to wake up to. And I was very confused um, why as to why this was happening. And, um, you know, obviously um, this wasn't the first time that they had spoke. So. This is crazy. This money wasn't in here yesterday. I used this brand new special program, and when I... I guess it is what it is. Whatever it was, uh, that's what it was. So um, this girl asked me to leave. I try to talk to her if she wanted to talk, so I, I left. I went outside to my vehicle. Um, I was trying to get my head on straight. Uh, for the next 10 minutes or so. And then uh, she walked out and she left. And I'm just like sitting there in her driveway. So I was like, okay, I'm going to leave. Um, you know, definitely feeling strange right now, but I'm going to leave. Uh, so I did that. And so that was um, like two or three, that was three nights ago. And then the next night, okay, 
uh, I started getting a lot of text messages and calls from this uh, from this guy, this gang stalker guy, this gang stalker guy that um, that's been involved in my situation for quite some time. So, um, you know, the text messages are going on and on about you know showing up at my house and and um, you know a lot of things that sound very threatening. And I have all of those text messages. Um, but I'm not going to read those to you. But one thing that struck me, well, it's a lot of it's a lot of mean type of sounding dirty things. But I'm going to play these voicemails for you. And there's two of them. And one of them in particular, um, you know, this guy is offering to sell me some safety. And I'm trying to figure out exactly what that means. There's quite a few things that I'm trying to figure out exactly what does he mean by this. Uh, you've been protecting me and and uh, you got safety for sale and all of these different things and, and how you need to get me back on track. And, uh, you know, um, these guys that are doing the live streams every day, um, it's, it's a horrible torture situation. And today was probably... One of the worst days of all time. There was four guys on my channel all day long attacking me nonstop. Um, you know, and I got all of these other things on my mind. And I took a huge personal loss today. Um, I, lo I lost a family member today. And, um, yeah, and it's just a lot of things piling on. Um, it really is, man. It's a lot of things piling on. But, um Anyway, let me play these. Let me play these uh, voice messages for you, uh, just to you know. This this is um, this is typical. You know, if a, if a gang stalker contacts me with threatening things or, or talking trash, or at least or or saying something to give any kind of validation uh, to things to do with. Um, with my remote neural monitoring, of course, I'm always going to post that. That's what I do. All right, so you can call me whatever you want to. Your opinion is not really that relevant to me. I do what I do. And, um, you know, and, uh, and, you know, all the threatening stuff, you show up and show up in my house and all of this kind of bizarre stuff. And, I, and I'm, you know, why, why do you even have my phone number? I mean, obviously we know how you got it, but here's the first one. Come out. Wherever you are, you're just a bad boy. Bad boy. Very disrespectful. Just a little sassafras. But we gotta get you revised, restored, kind of rewired, renewed. And get you put back on solid ground, my friend. You're scattered, smothered, recovered. Hell, I've been protecting your ass for 15 years. And this is the appreciation I get. Come on, man. Come on. You either gonna help me, or you gonna fuck me. And I think we need to be clicking on all cylinders, playing on the same team. Last time I checked, we was. You're just the only one trying to jump ship, man. Cut the tide and burn the ship. That ain't, that ain't wise. But uh, I got safety to sell. You know I got safety to sell. You got safety for sale. So he says he's got safety for sale. I don't re recall job, ever uh, that we were ever playing on the same Good team. Job, um, what I recall <laughs> is more like um, this group of gang stalkers trying to destroy me in any way possible uh, over the last five years. That's the way I...